some changes, some changes made. I can't keep on doing what I've been doing these days. Better figure out something, things are looking great. There are gonna be some changes, changes, changes made. Thank you, Attorney General Lisa Madigan. Our next uh, speaker is uh, Ken uh, Swanson, President of IEA, who will introduce uh, the uh, Randy uh, Weingartner, President of AFT, a great uh, uh, labor leader uh, for the teachers of Illinois in America. Yeah. Ken? Good morning, Illinois. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I want to say on behalf of all of us in IEA who are here, thank you to each and every one of you for your cordial and warm hospitality this week. It has been a tremendous pleasure to be here during this historic week. And I am so excited about what we're going to do together between now and November 4th to make Barack Obama the next President of the United States. I am a 20 plus year career teacher and I can tell you as any teacher can, as any education employee can, that a core of the success we can do in the classroom and in the school is based on the family situation from which our students come. And so in this election my friends, we have a party that talks family values while they erode the very support system of health care, pension, and economic security that these families need. So, we have seen this week, we have a ticket. We have two outstanding candidates for president and vice president. They are living examples of what real family values are all about and let the other party claim to talk about family values. And when we have a support system for our families, every child will get a great education because it'll be a partnership between school and home. And we look forward to working on that 24 seven between now and November 4th. I wanna take a moment to say especially, it is great to be here with Ed Geppert and the IFT. And I know in the years past, we all know there's been some history there. Well, the recent history is we have had a great partnership and working relationship. Ed, I appreciate that and I look forward to building our partnership in the years ahead as I do with the rest of the House of Labor. I know at times IEA has maybe been seen as the half brother and half sister of the labor movement. We're working on it, my friends, because what unites us is much more than those things they may be quibble about. And Mr. Mayor, I am a diehard Cub fan. <laughs> and I'll come back to that in just a second. But, uh, you know, IEA has been behind Obama since before the Iowa caucuses. We had some of our members and retired members working in Iowa for the caucuses. We have been the ambassadors within NEA for Barack Obama from the start. I'm very proud of that. I am excited to have helped play that role of bringing the NEA recommendation for Barack Obama forward. And now back to baseball. This November and this October, as we're working 24-7, we can multitask. We can also pay a little attention to a Cubs-White Sox World Series, which you're going to let us win in seven games, because once every hundred years isn't too much to ask for. And so, hey, hey, holy cow, and put it on the board, yes, we can! Thank you, uh, Ken. I want to remind you, Barack Obama and Mike Madigan and myself will be in the first row uh, watching uh, the next uh, champions of the World Series, Chicago White Sox. So we have... <laughs> At this time, I'd like to introduce the President of the Illinois Federation of Teachers, Ed Gebert. Ed. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Chairman Madigan. 
On behalf of the Illinois Federation of Teachers and our largest local, the Chicago Teachers Union, we are proud to be here today with our fellow Democrats in the state of Illinois in hosting this delegation. It's breakfast. As president of the IFT, I have the honor of representing over 90,000 public professionals throughout Illinois. Our union is built on the dedication and hard work of elementary and secondary teachers and staff, university and community college faculty and staff, public employees in the state and local government, health care workers. Before I introduce our special guest this morning, let me take you back to August 2003, when our 30-person executive board met a skinny young man with a funny name who thought he could be a United States Senator. That day we met Barack Obama as an organization for the first time. We had known him in Springfield as an, as an up-and-coming legislator, but our board saw a spark of intellect and personality in leadership in him that teachers are trained to recognize. We saw what tens of millions of Americans see today, the passion to fix wrongs, the heart to do it right, the gift of leadership to inspire all of us to bring about real change in America. In 2007, leaders on our board like Marilyn Stewart, the president of the Chicago Teachers Union. Marilyn, where are you at? Stand up. There she is. And uh, moved, Marilyn led the fight inside our organization to put Barack Obama as the endorsed candidate. The IFT has one of the most politically active local unions in the nation and local 1600 Cook County College teachers. Perry Buckley, where's Perry at? There you go, Perry. Perry's local raises, on average, in excess of $70 per member in hard money in a campaign. The largest amount in the AFT by share, and I am certain, in many AFL-CL unions. Perry and his local broke new ground in terms of political action and labor movement. In fact, Local 1600 was the first local union in the United States to endorse Barack Obama for president. Perry was so far ahead of us that the endorsement came 30 days before Brock even announced he was running. <laughs> and finally, let me introduce and uh, recognize the man who works in our political activities in legislative areas for so many years and has shown great leadership, Steve Freckwanko. Steve? Very <laughs> uh, yeah. Today, I have the honor of, uh, of introducing to you a remarkable leader who comes from the largest union in the world, the United Federation of Teachers, Local 2 in New York. It is, it is a great honor and it is a, a great here that we are able to have some from New York to join us. Because this crusade to overcome the process of race in this country by nominating an African American for president started with a teacher from New York by the name of Shirley Chisholm. In 1972. 1972, she was able to collect 151 votes, delegate votes, in a run for president. Local 2 has continued to grow and be dramatic in terms of its political activity with a COPE fund that in excess of $6 million a year. The UFT has succeeded because of the innovation, determination, and passion of our guests this morning. Randy Weingarten is the new president of the American Federation of Teachers. In Chicago this summer, she was elected to represent our 1.4 million members throughout the country. Randy left a law career on Wall Street where she could, like Brock, with his tools and degree, could have been very comfortable in their lives. But she, before she became president of the UFT in 1998, she went to the classroom to teach history at the Clara Barton High School in Brooklyn's Crown Heights neighborhood. Randy wants to build on the legacies of her predecessors, the Al Shanker, Sandy Feldman, and Ed McElroy. But in a word, because of all the, the work Randy has done through the years and how her great leadership, there is one word that describes her. Randy is tough. She is inexhaustible energy when it comes to serving members. New York is one hour ahead of us, but I still get emails at 2, 3, 4 a.m. She never stops working. She sets high standards for herself, her staff, and this union. Randy is a new generation of leader, just like Barack Obama is a new generation of a Democratic leader. Randy, our delegation, is proud to sit in front and center on the convention floor. 
but I hope you'll share with us what it's like sitting next to the Clintons through these remarkable speeches. I give you the great president of the American Federation of Teachers, Randy Weingarten. Okay, now, I must say, as you know, I really believe in unity, but it doesn't go so far as my rooting for the Cubs. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a Met fan. The White Sox, yes. You can beat those Yankees anytime. <laughs> but the Mets, long suffering. <laughs> Anyway, it is really a delight to be here. I, you know, Illinois, Marilyn and I always tease. Local two is New York. Local one is Chicago. So she always looks at me and says this, and I always look at her and say this. Um, and I hear that she's had done these terrific pictures all week long and that you've been having a great time on the floor of the convention all week. But this has been an amazing convention, and we will lift off and work, and I've heard Ken and others say, 24-7. In the labor movement, you understand what 24-7 means. It really means you work 50 hours in a 24-hour period of time, and you work 10 days in a seven-day period of time. And frankly, we're going to have to do that for the next seven weeks, and this kid from New York is going to work as fiercely, if not more fiercely, for Barack Obama than we ever did for Hillary Clinton. Because we have, we know what the stakes are in this election, and we must have a Democrat in the White House this November, and his name is Barack Obama! You know what? There's a proud, and I just, I know everybody's introduced people here, and so it's, it is an honor for me to be on a stage with Mayor Daley. It's an honor for me to be on a stage with Congressman Emanuel. It's an honor for me to um, um, meet Speaker Madigan, his daughter, all of you here, because there's a lot of similarities between New York and Chicago. And one of those similarities is about we could do a lot of jokes about that, but I'm going, to keep, I'm going to keep it, you know, on the high ground today. But one of those similarities is about how we all embody democratic principles and how our cities have been cities where we understood at our gut that if we do not work between the elected officials and the labor movement to try to lift all boats, to try to help those who have fallen behind or who never got ahead, then America would not be that great. And your mayor embodies that, and your city embodies that, and you embody that in such an amazing way that I've always, always admired the way in which Chicago and Illinois has worked together to try and make America better for ordinary Americans. And I just really wanted to first say thank you for doing all of that and thank you as a Democratic Party for understanding and embracing what the labor movement is about and what our role is in terms of creating social justice, economic justice, and yes, better schools. Thank you very much, Illinois, for doing that. And I just... And I'm glad that Ed raised Shirley Chisholm, and this is an amazing moment in time, but I just want to say a couple of things about the AFT. Because we have been a proud partner and leader in the efforts to improve education. We not only accept innovation and reform, but we are often in many we're often the driving force between new measures public schools. I often say in New York, when everybody abandoned the public schools, the union was there as the band-aid and the glue, trying to fight to keep them together. And ultimately, that is what happens in Illinois as well. And a special shout out to Local One for doing all of that. Thank you, Marilyn. But what I want to say, and then I'm going to stop, is this. What I get concerned about is sometimes in our effort to do unions get. And I was sitting at a luncheon five of the 
Um, Governor Sabir. Um, from Delaware, and all of them, Governor Neftali, I know that was for um, from Delaware, and all of them, I know that was for and all of them talk the same thing as Barack Obama. About, talked about that you do reform in schools bottom up and you do reform in schools with the teachers all of us accepting more responsibility as school schools as opposed to imposing reform on people and what you've seen one by one by one, one by one by one by one, is that they have improved their programs by forming partnerships with teachers and is that they have our education system every step of the way in several other places as well. And I am here to say to those of you in Illinois, I've said it to people in New York as well, work with us. We want to make sure that every single school in this country is a school where parents want to see educators want to work. We want to make sure that once and for all, with Barack Obama as the President of the United States of America, that we usher in a new era of excellence in our public schools where finally every single child can reach his or her God-given potential. It is time in the 21st century that every child not only dreams his or her dreams, but can achieve them. We are willing to step up and do that, and we want to work with everyone in this country to do that. That's who the AFT is. That's who the AFT will be. That's who the link is between the Democratic Party and progressive trade unionists. Do that unless we elect Barack Obama as president. And ultimately, that means, Celeste, ultimately that means, ultimately that means, ultimately that means, to be out there and the convincing teachers of this country will, convincing people that do we want the same direction of this country? No! We can make more noise than that. Do we want a country where a senator party line says the economy is just fine? No. Where do we want a country where who's running for president? The schism between rich and poor grows greater and greater? No. Do we want a country where somebody says they'll give a couple of vouchers out to kids instead of helping all kids? No. Do we want a country that the health care system is just where somebody thinks that it's fine and what their solution is is just to tax working people more for health care? No. Well, if we don't want that, what are we going to do in November? I can't hear you. What are we going to do in November? Thank you very much.
nine estates when the believe me, we are all going to be the same color. In the dark. You know, I've been with uh, European leaders of really quite an eye-opener with me, or for me. Uh, I had leaders from Russia, Italy, Great Britain, Britain, Belgium, Australia. And I was really shocked how they are all counting on us to elect a president that will set the world stage for workers and the middle class. As the middle class goes, so goes America. And believe it or not, as America goes, so goes the free world. America's presidential election influence, influences the entire free world. These folks are really anxious that we're going to get out and do the job that we need to do because it means so much to them and their countries. Their, econ their economies suffer along with ours. So let's get the word out to those who can make a difference, those who can vote for a Democratic candidate who wants to return America back to the working class families, a candidate who wants to restore America to its pre-Bush economy, a candidate who wants to bring our jobs back onto American soil, not continue to outsource them, a candidate who believes in the working class, a candidate who believes in family values, a candidate who wants to take care of our veterans that they've given so much and fought so hard to take care of us in this country, a candidate who pledges to unite us once again, a candidate who will restore the hopes and dreams of all Americans to deliver this world better than he found it. That candidate, and you know who it is, it's Barack Obama, the man we need to elect for a better United States and a better world. God bless you, my brothers and sisters and friends of Illinois. It's great to be with you. Thanks, Mark. Thanks,